All right, so welcome to the Sphinx documentation both. So even though it's a, it's a both session, I would like to first present a couple of slides and a small demonstration of, uh, of, uh, yeah, of what I converted. So it's, uh, the both is about documentation which we have and what we can improve. So at the beginning, let's realize what, what we have. So we have web pages. Uh, which mainly contain some um, development information, really cycle uh, information about uh, how to contribute to the project, uh, about coding style, style of uh, changes uh, for Git commits. And it also contains information like what's the currently supported set of C++ features, for instance, which is updated by uh, Marek Poláček, for instance. So it's one part. The second part, which, are, which I'm mainly interested in, is the tech info documentation, which uh, contains of two parts. The first one is the user level documentation. It's the, it's the documentation which uh, GCC consumers or people who use it yeah, visit the, 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 the most time. And the second part is for, for us, it's for developers who, who would like to know the internals of, of GCC and uh, how to, how to yeah, write a new port or how to write a new pass, stuff like that. And the last part is uh, GCC Wiki, which also contains information about projects mainly. For instance, as, as David showed, he uses uh, wiki pages for status of analyzer. He links issues, he links uh, new features. He, yeah, he also writes some kind of uh, changes, uh, changes. changes yeah, minor or in detail how the changes. And we, it also contains some uh, API documentation, for instance, LTO plugin is documented there, and it's also used for LTO offloading, if I'm correct, you also use it for some documentation. So all of these are documentation which, which we have in, in, some, in some way. And yeah, we, we combine formats, so for web pages it's obvious, it's HTML, for Wikipedia it's also obvious, it's a it's, yeah, wiki markdown, and the rest, the tech info is written in the tech info, and we uh, output that into multiple output formats, like manual pages, info pages, and HTML and PDF. So that's, that's, that's what the output. And uh, it's, it's good to realize who are the stakeholders of the documentation. So, so first, it's users, and they typically don't write the documentation, they consume it. So they are the, the biggest consumer of the documentation. So if you, if you realize, or if you have comments about documentation, it's, it's good to realize that we write the documentation as, as developers, but we are not a typical consumer of the documentation because we, yeah, we are very skilled users of, uh, of, docu of the documentation which we, which we write. And the last category are some package maintainers, people who build tool chain. So these people are interested in installation section, for instance. They would like to know about how to configure, build, test uh, the project. So that's, that's about you know, stakeholders. And I will, I will now show uh, a few examples what, what a typical user can, can do. So example number one is you are a consumer of, of, of GCC and you would like to know what options are enabled at O2. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a reasonable request for documentation. So, so if, you, if you open the HTML documentation, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult. So one option is going to the index at the very end and then finding uh, Oh, so, yeah, it works. If you write O2, it doesn't work, so you have to remove the leading uh, dash, and then you eventually find it. And there's a list of, of the options which uh, are enabled by O2. 
So, so now the question is, I would like to know what each of these actually means. So that's that, 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 that's a problem. So um, second option, how you can, you, can, you can search for it. You can use Google. And as you can see, you will land in the very same uh, web page. But in this case, for GCC 3.4, which is, which is probably yeah, old. So, so this is not ideal. Uh, so now I'm opening the Sphinx migrated documentation, and I'm going to do the very same. I will just write O2. And there's a built-in index capability, and I can see that the first result is some program option, which I'm interested in. If I open it, uh, it will yeah, point me directly to the place where it's defined. And I have, I have uh, references to individual options which are mentioned at O2. If I, if I open a PDF version of, of the migrated documentation. So I, I don't want to track, because I think this is good. But you could have had links in the tech info, because it, it, you've actually had to change this now to add links in here in Sphinx. Now, I know it's easy to do in Sphinx, because it'll do it automatically for you. But the point is, that's, that's a property of you've done the documentation better, rather than directly being a property of using Sphinx. So, 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 so even now, in tech info, you, 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 can, you can achieve the, the, the links. That's what, what you're, you are saying. If you want to. Yes. You've done better documentation. That's great. But it's not because it's Sphinx. Joseph? Does think Sphinx itself solve the problem of Google finding an old version of the documentation. So I was wondering, do you have an idea about how you might do something like, say, the Python documentation does of having a link pointing out this is an old version and here's links to the corresponding documentation from a more recent version? Because that sort of thing, which maybe is a bit orthogonal to the build tools, link to the current version seems like what you might want to address the issue of Google finds an old version. Yeah, the, the answer is that, for instance, uh, if you know the Read the Docs web page, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a hosting platform for documentation using the Sphinx. And you can have different versions of documentation. And there's a, there's a toolbox showing you, OK, this is obsolete version. The stable version is this one, and there's a yeah, warning saying that you might want to jump to the latest ver version of documentation. But th the problem with the, with, the, with the versioning is that we, we list all the documentation. So, so, so the issue is probably uh, how we list all the versions of uh, like this. This is probably the problem that we list all the in individual old versions of documentation, at, and Google is probably unhappy about, uh, about them. Yes, yeah, CMake actually has got a really good way of doing that. When you search for something and Google gives you CMake 3.3, at the top of the page, there's a, a pop-up which allows you to pick any version of CMake you want to look at. So if we could implement something like that, would be really cool. Yeah. But perhaps for that page, we could just move the uh, no longer supported GCC versions to a separate page and add some attributes to, for, for Google not to search it. Uh, or... Yes. <laughs> we can improve it. Yeah, I wanted to show that, that, that probably now people use Google to search the, the, the options because the, the other option which I showed is it's, it's, yeah, it's clunky. It's, it's, it's not pleasant. So probably they use Google because of that. Uh, Martin, there were yes. two more advantages that I, maybe you're about to cover this. Um, but if I'm, say, someone asked me a question on IRC about, you know, how do I do this in GCC? And I want to tell them, oh, use, I don't know, dash, optimi dash f optimize trillen. And I, you know, I'm, and I, I'm, I've got it, the docs in front of me. I click on it. Okay, how do I tell the user 
Uh, well, first of all, what is the URL look like if you click on that on one, on one of them? Uh, if, you, if, you click, if, yeah, if you click on it, it's command option, yeah, as opposed to, I guess, index equals, um, I can't remember the, the, exactly what is the URL. Good, a good URL is human readable and memorable and doesn't change, and I can't mm -hmm. remember all the other properties of, good, of a good URL. And currently the tech, in, the tech info generated HTML URLs kind of suck in places, um, especially if they contain punctuation. Um, well, it's dash index dash dash, yeah, um, I th I possibly ones, maybe it's fixed up, I'm not sure, maybe I'm being unfair. But also, if you go back to the, 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 the Sphinx generated HTML, you'll notice that if you hover next to it, there's a, it gives you a really handy permalink. So when someone asks me a question in IRC, and I look at, and I think, oh, I'm pretty sure it's that, and then I can, I can copy and paste that URL and paste that into, the, into yeah. IRC and say, it's here, and then they can go straight to the doc. Um, whereas, if you look at the tech info generated documentation of the same, and say, I found it, I, um, well, say I hadn't looked it up, I'm just scrolling down the page, and it's like, how do I get the, the link for that? And I have to do a view source and find the, what's the anchor called? Yeah. And it's just, and the, and the link is not precise because, yeah. because yeah, this should be at the very top of the page, and yeah. it's not. And um, when I'm and when I'm writing, I mean, for libgcc JIT, I'm using, um, I mean, ah, yeah, okay, I, I've been using Sphinx from the beginning, and it's so much nicer when I'm writing my release notes for when I want to talk about something, and I can and I'm, I'm paste a URL into the release notes, and people say it's it's here. Whereas if I was using tech info, it, I, I wouldn't bother because it would just be too much work. Um, I feel. Um, I have a long rant about all this. But I'll yeah, I, I have a few, few comments about your libgcc documentation. So, so, so back to the, the PDF version. So you have you have lists of O2 options. I will zoom in a bit. And what, what's 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 nice that you have the references and they are precise. So, for instance, I can I can hover over it and I can see directly what's what's meaning of the of the option. So I can I can like yeah very quickly identify what's each option about. This is the, the Sphinx generated PDF. Yes, and yes. This is, sorry, um, is, this is the Sphinx generated PDF. And is this, is this a Vince you're using, which um, I, think, I think that's a Vince, isn't it, the doc viewer? Yeah, I think that hover thing is a, is a property of the viewer that you're using. Um, Rather. So this is this is a Vince uh, PDF viewer, and yeah. it's capable of the the web browser built-in uh, PDF viewer is not capable of these uh, of these links. Okay, so so that's uh, that's that's the example of number one. Uh, what else? Yeah, for instance, we have we have very many options which are target dependent. For instance, M long call, and what's 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 interesting that this option is defined for multiple targets, each having probably different different meaning, different uh, details. So so I I use uh, yeah the Sphinx offers program scope. So you define a name of program, and there you have a set of options. So I'm abusing this feature a bit. So I'm you can see that there's a list of all the all the targets which which define the m long call option so so the option is so is, is actually documented multiple times so for each target different meaning and if you want to have a cross reference so you, you must be precise saying okay i would like to link to this target m call option so it's it's a nice feature of uh, how you can define a uh, of like multiple times it's, it's, it's the very same what we have for function attributes, variable att attributes, that are, we have target dependent uh, attributes, and they are defined multiple times, having different meaning, and if you want to make a link to a proper one, so you need some scoping. So that's, that's, that's the second demonstration. Uh, as, as David mentioned, so, so we, so, I'm suggesting using Sphinx, but we are using Sphinx because uh, libgcc documentation is written in Sphinx, and Ada 
has three manuals which are also written in Sphinx, and then these manuals are converted to TechInfo like, automatically by, by, by Sphinx and eventually being uh, yeah, uploaded to the uh, website which we have. So, so, so we use Sphinx. So what's nice, for instance, about uh, the uh, LabGCC JIT that it contains a lot of tutorials. So if I open one of them, uh, so, so it's a it's mixture of examples, uh, code snippets, uh, and what's, what's quite nice that you, ha you, you can have a C expression with, which contains some types or n values, and uh, you, can, you can click to the definition of, of, the, of the type. So it's, uh, it's a nice feature how you can not only document functions, but you can also have expressions where the content can be also documented and you get uh, links for free. So that's, uh, that's quite useful. And uh, yeah, so there's some, so, so Sphinx offers syn syntax highlighting for uh, languages, also for assembly output. And uh, what's, what's nice about uh, examples, for instance, that you, you, can, you can have a separate file which is included by a directive. So in, in your case, it can be a, a, a test suite uh, file which you include into the documentation so you still know the, 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 the test or the, the example works on one hand. And on the other, on the other hand, you can, you can include it in the documentation or you can take a part of, of, the, of the file and include it in the documentation and uh, yeah, document how, how uh, the library works. Okay, so that's, that's about, the, uh, about the demonstration. I can, I can show more examples if you will be interested in, uh, in any topic. So, so summarizing uh, the limitation, so as already mentioned, it's about navigation, search capability. Uh, the, the, the formatting is quite poor. We, we don't use much visual, visual yeah, aspects of HTML we can, we, we can theoretically use. Uh, yeah, the link anchors are poor. Uh, that's about the, the, the precise position where you can get and the, the URL as, most, as was mentioned. Uh, yeah, missing cross references. So it's we, for instance, use keywords for options or for I don't know files, uh, items, this kind of stuff. But 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 tech info is is not doing many cross references, as as showed in case of uh, the O2 options, which are linked. Uh, yeah, uh, code highlighting is probably possible via some external. Program oh, my, microphone, please. Actually, for the internals manual, I don't think Google is a workaround. I, it's only possible to search for developer stuff by actually printing out the PDF or having a PDF and searching in that. If you tried to search for, uh, you know, some kind of a tree type using Google, it would just be crazy. Yeah. You mean the in internal GCC documentation which we have? I know it's 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 exception. That's uh, at the risk of opening a can of worms, and you listed at the beginning of your slides, I think three different kinds of information. There's a fourth that strikes me as um, Doxygen or auto-generating API documentation direct from the code, and you didn't even mention that, but. I think you are, you have a, a, a doxage or one of or maybe it's one of your colleagues. It's it's maybe lip a CDC plus plus is using. Yeah, okay. uh, one that, um, that is used. But um, I, one of the SUSE, one of you was or had a had a auto updated doxage. Yeah, that's build. That, that's that's me. But that's, yeah, <laughs> sorry, um, I know what you mean. Because I have all, now we're using, I've got all my internal C++ APIs, and I don't want to write a bunch of, and this is this class, and this is, this. no, just get it from the class hierarchies from the code. Um, but that, this is maybe, uh, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll put that stone back down, and we can <laughs> <laughs> not, not bother about that. Sorry. 
So, OK, I'll lift the stone back up again. I think so on the on the doxygen, I think we looked at this in the past. Isn't the problem that the GFDL and the GPL are incompatible? And we had pushback that you're not allowed to include stuff from the code. The, 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 I can't remember where we tripped over that. Now, hopefully we can grow up and get past that and, and fix that because it's a stupid objection. No one's trying to do anything bad. What I really wanted to ask the question was about is you had a really good last example with some really good examples. And the number of manuals I've read, and actually GCC is better than most on this, but where you try the example out and no one's updated it and it doesn't work on the latest version of the compiler. And I know something that I think the LLVM people have looked at, I don't know how far they got with it, is actually testable documentation. And you can do it with uh, Sphinx because this can be an external file. And so long as you stick to a strict discipline of any file that you reference actually is executable, and then you can just do a make check documentation and you can make sure that all your examples work and that fixes that problem in a, rather than we do it manually at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, basically I'm hash include, well not hash include, but the Sphinx direct, RST directive for include from the Deja GNU um, test suite. Uh, and um, uh, maybe I should confess that when I, com uh, pr when I contributed the libgcc documentation, the license at the top is not the GFTL, and no one noticed or complained. Um, but it's on video. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's been however many years now. Um, but uh, yeah, shouldn't have said it's, that. It's uh, free documentation license. So, um, I am the, the Linux kernel documentation maintainer, the guy who inflicted Sphinx upon the kernel community. So I came here mostly in case you have any questions, but I, would just, I just wanted to address the test coverage thing because it wouldn't be that hard to write an extension module that runs and tests, does the tests as part of the docs build. You know, if you really wanted to be hardcore about that, you could do that. And um, it would be pretty easy to do. One of the nice things about Sphinx is the extensibility of it. For that, I think it would be nice to have some markup that whether the test is complete, compilable, linkable, and, and so on, like we have the uh, Dejagnu directives somewhere, and, and then don't show those directives in, in the documentation. But for instance, in, in OpenMP, uh, in the, in the uh, test suite, uh, test, uh, well, uh, OpenMP examples document is also generated by having tests on the side and each of them is marked whether it's, it's just a snippet showing something and not really compilable or if it's full test and you can link it or and in which language and, and so on. Yeah, so, so, so the motivation for moving to Sphinx, uh, so number one is addressing all limitations I, I showed previously. Second is that we already use it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit funny. Uh, about the syntax, it's, it's, it's a markup language, I would say somehow similar to, to tech info. It's, it's, it's not a dog book fancy XML complex stuff. It's fairly simple for people who write code and need to document stuff. And uh, yeah, it was proved to be useful by Python community, I guess, and uh, kernel is also using Sphinx. And there's uh, yeah entire project, it's called ReadDocs. It, it's hosting, apparently it's 100,000 Document, doc, uh, documentations from different projects. So it's, it's, a, it's a quite huge ecosystem. Uh, yeah, there are some limitations, definitely. So, so the first one is that we, we combine somehow automatic, we, we, we migrate the documentation out, uh, automatically, plus we, yeah, I, I made a bunch of manual changes. So it, the documentation still may contain errata. Uh, 
instead of a few huge files which we have right now, we will have hundreds of files because because of uh, how Sphinx works. It's basically one web page maps to one RST file. So if you have if you have smaller uh, uh, pages, then these are quite small files. Uh, yeah, developers need to learn the new syntax. Uh, that's that's drawback. Uh, yeah, we will probably lose somehow the history because of uh, git blame. Well, what, I mean, an advantage is that new developers don't have to learn tech info anymore. And new developers, <laughs> I think, are, are much more likely to know restructured text because so many other projects are using it. But yeah. yeah, for newcomers, it's definitely a benefit. Martin, you've, you've just had up an example of a Sphinx version of the GCC manual. Have you done the conversion? Yes. Okay, so, okay, right, so you've done most of the work anyway. Yeah, so... so How, and that went okay, because you've talked about all the problems, but that all looked quite good that you'd got. Yeah, it's... It, yeah, it's... I don't know, it's... Uh, I, I made a, a couple of proofreading rounds around documentation. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm quite clear. I'm. I'm. I'm quite sure it's. Yeah, in a in a good shape. It's not. It's not. It's not broken or completely broken. There are some minor, smaller formatting formatting issues. So we mainly speak about visual defects. Let's say, in the documentation, not about. Yeah. Textual ones. So so as I mentioned, the git blame would be harder. We have some scripts which upload the documentation. I can I can modify them. Uh, yeah, we will we'll get new Sphinx warnings because of uh, yeah some some stuff. For instance, the we we document attributes multiple times, as mentioned. So I, I need to create probably target specific attribute names. Uh, yes, there are some projects that are emerging. They are they are they, they would like to be merged into 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 upstream, and they might have some tech info documentation. So for for Rust, it's not a problem. I know, I know. But for Modula 2, there's there's the documentation with con which contains um, a couple of hundred pages. And uh, we'll eventually get a new dependency for packagers of GCC because the, the Sphinx is, yeah, it's using Python stack. So instead of, or apart from Perl, which, which we depend on now, we will also need uh, Python. Uh, yeah, some some extra benefits. So so number one is uh, yeah, Sphinx contains a bunch of extensions. The useful one is so-called InterSphinx, and it allows you to cross-reference in between manuals. So for instance, we have installation manual, and yeah, we have we have the the GCC manual, and we have a couple of cross-references saying if you want this option, you have to enable this configure option. So it's it's example of cross-references. Uh, or you have uh, mm -mm, libgomp referencing some 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 stuff. So so this is a nice benefit and it also works in PDF because PDF points to the HTML version of, of the of the corresponding cross manual. Uh, there are the Sphinx themes. Uh, we have many options, so I, I selected. Yeah, the the. I selected this one because I I was fine with the with the visual visual presentation. Uh, we can we can change it if we want. It contains nice features like a link checker. So it basically takes all the URLs in the in the in the manual and it verifies that that the URL still exists or if it's redirected or permanently redirected. So you can get this type of information. So for instance, Fortran manual contains yeah some removed links links because yeah it's an old project. Uh, yeah, we can get a new output format for. Mm, yeah, EPUB, which is a, which is a, some reader format, if I'm if I'm correct. And yeah, we can eventually, as as, as mentioned at the very beginning, we have we have uh, 
also documentation at web pages. So we can maybe migrate some of them into, into Sphinx as well. For instance, the changes and porting, which is, which is mainly listing new options. So you can get nice references. You can have code snippets, examples. So it's all much better doable in Sphinx than in pure HTML. So that's one candidate. Or we can, I don't know, we can include supported C++ features in a, in a table into the document as well. We have many options for, for, for this. Microphone, please. Yeah. So I think what would help people most is if you have a way to write documentation that, that you can see what you're doing, so what you see is what you get kind of situation, and also has the right markup, so it's compatible with the documentation that's already there. Is there a mechanism for doing that that you're aware of that's either open source or readily available? No. Well, um, about the migration, how, 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 is, how is it done? So we do it, we do it by exporting, making for into XML, and then David started um, a converter, conversion tool which migrates that to uh, Sphinx. So that's how we do it. I was thinking maybe of new documentation. New documentation. So if you write new documentation, you would like to see the equivalent in, uh, in Tech Info? Yeah, you know, most of the people, um, many people now are used to what you see is what you get kind of editors. So if we were able to set something up which had the right markup for GCC documentation, but the, as you generate the documentation, you can see how it's going to look, I think that might actually help new contributors quite a bit. So do you mean some uh, being able to compile a snippet of documentation to how it looks? Yeah, there are some definitely some tools, but does that, does well, it... there's a restructured text mode in Emacs anyway, which gives you a rough idea what it's going to look like. And also, um, your, choose your favorite repository hosting tool typically will display restructured text reasonably competently. So, OK, it's not as you see it, but you can push it and view it and it'll, it'll show up quite good. Um, and I mean, I write quite a lot of restructured text, and it is a lot easier than I write a lot of tech info as well, and yeah. it's, it's a lot easier than tech info and a lot more flexible. Okay, so the two points to what I'm saying. One point is the ease of seeing what it's going to look like. That's the, what you see is what you get. But the second point was making sure that it's got the right markup in it so is that when the person submits the patch, it's going to be reasonably acceptable? Is there like a way of getting a, a profile? Like uh, having warnings and errors of, of, the, of, the, of the written documentation, you mean? I'm, I'm still not saying the right thing. What I mean is like if you had a CSS kind of thing that gave you, the, gave you all the formatting that was going to be acceptable for GCC, it would be much, much less chance of making a mistake in doing the documentation and then having to repeat it? Yeah. You can do it. I mean, have you looked at restructured text? I mean, this, the simplicity of it is such that, that I think a lot of these style questions don't really come up. Um, it's, there's, there's not a lot you can do in a sense, uh, unless you really want to get into fancy things. I mean, the other thing is every generated HTML page actually has a link to show you the source, the restructured text source, so it might even be. Yeah, this it's a bit the, dark and difficult to read there, but there should be a link. Yeah, the, the, this 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 this, con this concrete theme doesn't show it, but I can I can okay. I can tweak it. Yeah, it's it's common for. If, um, if I if I open, for instance, the uh, kernel uh, documentation, they are using very standard uh, uh, theme. If I open a random page, I can click View uh, Page Source. And I, I see how it looks like. I think all this shows is that one of the first documents you need to write is an introduction to Sphinx for people who've learned tech info. Because yes. that's, that's always any new technology, that's the first document you want anyway. Yeah, I actually, I actually, uh, I, I wrote a chapter into the internal documentation, uh, which is uh, this one. If you write, Sphinx. Yeah, you get building documentation. I, I, I took, yeah, there's about 
dependencies and there are some basic examples taken from, yeah, it's basically taken from um, kernel documentation and yeah. So yes, we can definitely include some introduction to Sphinx pages which already exist and a lot of patch submitters do seem to be extremely bad in tech info at things like ensuring various constructs say command line option names are marked up properly or for that matter ensuring options, configure options etc that a document is at all and so on. So I don't really expect people to be much better or worse at doing that sort of thing in the Sphinx. If we want to make them better at it, I'd have thought that what we probably need is not so much some WYSIWYG thing as a sufficiently reliable way of checking for things without false, po without false positives, that you could have some test that points out automatically there are these things that you've missed documenting, mm. there are these things that are not marked up properly, because you can approximate with various things with VET, but that tends to have lots of false positives as well. That, that, that's the same for if you send a patch, you introduce new tests, and you don't have any guarantee that the test actually works because the person claimed that the person bootstrapped and run test suite. So it's, it's the same what we have my, with... Uh, my feeling is there's, le there's less semantic variation actually in the directives in, in Sphinx, so there's less to get confused about is it a command or a keyword, uh, which, which does make it easier. But the great thing is, now you've converted the entire manual, which is the biggest document I think we have, then it's not difficult to pull out the entire set of constructs you've used, and there'll only be about 15 or 20 of them, put them in the front, in the internals manual, and that, that's the subset that you need. Yes. I have a, I mean, I have a personal argument on this, which is that, um, and th th this may be turning into a rant, but every time I'm working on documentation, if I'm working on tech info, I find I'm just, I'm going to get this done quickly. I'm going to go in, do what I need to do, and get out because the result is just, it's, it's a chore. When I'm working with Sphinx, I know the result's going to look beautiful, and I, and I take that extra effort and care about my work because it's going to look great and uh, can I get that link and can I mark it up that way? So it's, this may be just be me and I'm weird, but um, it is a sort of, thank you, uh, but I, I, I feel so much more sort of pride in my work because I know that, so for example, the LibJCC JIT documentation, because I, I, I got really into it because I knew it was going to look great using Sphinx and mm -hmm. I was a kind of, I don't want to work on this if it's tech info. It's, I, don't, I just don't have the enthusiasm if it's going to be 1990 style web page with a navigation stretch I can't understand. And now I'm being rude about tech info and I should stop. <laughs> I mean, what do we need to do? Is there other action items? We've got 15 minutes, I think. Sorry. I'm yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah the, we, 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 we can skip the conversion details, but yeah, the conclusion is, uh, do we want to use Sphinx? And is there anybody who can uh, somehow approve it? Because I don't know, for instance, Richie is kind of okay-ish with, with the patch. Uh, and to be honest, I, 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 yeah, we had some private conversation with uh, documentation maintainers, Sandra and uh, Gerald. Yeah, and it's, well, the problem is that it's, it's a bike shedding issue. It's, 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 it's a typical topic for bike shedding. And for instance, I know Sandra has some comments about the visual nits and uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, I, I, I won't be able to fix all the small uh, fallback, uh, fallback uh, fallout which, which comes from the migration. I mean, in terms of Sandra has years of deep knowledge and expertise about our documentation and I mean I guess the question is is she, is she is she is she here is she on board does anyone I mean I suspect do we need to convince her who who do we need to he, she, she, is she, she sufficiently happy yeah uh, she, she she yeah she, she told me that she can write technical documentation in, in any format so she, she, she she's she's fine with with, yeah. uh, with the format selection yeah. but she had some smaller comments about the about the migrated version of documentation. Uh, in terms of the other, I guess, requirements, um, one of the 
for me, I want good, a good, in, a kind of in order of preference, I want great HTML, I want good PDF, and I want good man page. Well, I, I think both the man page and the PDF are the same. You didn't show the generated man page, but I mean, I know it looks great, but maybe you want to, uh, I guess the question is, do we have a consensus? How do we make a decision on, can we do this? Because um, for me, I'd love, I've, I've been wanting to do this for years, but I don't know if, I'm like that. I, I use Sphinx. I'd prefer to use Sphinx rather than Tech Info. But I think the people to convince are those who don't yet use Sphinx. And that's why the comment I made earlier, I think is really important, is to make it easy because the oh no, yet another technology is changing. I've got to learn, learn yet another thing is a real barrier. And, you know, people may quibble about the layout, but that's the one that really matters. Yeah. And so if, I, I think if we could, I'd love to have it to happen straight away because it would make everything easier. But I think. To, you, to bring people along, you've got to give them that helping hand. That yeah, and, and, step. and if we can do that, then I think it... So, so I can definitely there. extend the in, internal documentation chapter. I can link some, some yeah, the most common, most common keywords. And I can also help people struggling with documentation. It's, yeah, for me, it's very similar to migration from SVN to, to JIT. So, so we also made a migration. And then there was, I don't know, Jonathan, for instance, helping others get used to the basics for those who, who are not familiar with, with, the, with, the, with the change. So, yeah, I'm... Um, I've had limited exposure to Sphinx, and uh, you mentioned in one of your slides, Git blame will become more hard. And is that for the RST files? That it, what does that mean exactly? It, it means that, that we have a history which is, which is uh, in, the, in the tech info source files. And there's entire history there. So if you want to investigate a change, you will have to go back to revision before the migration, and then you will be able to blame. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, how often do how how often um, do you do it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think I'm a little bit worried the dependent for you, not for developers, of course, we install Sphinx. And so do we, for instance, print the documentation in GCC re underscore release for the users so they don't have these dependencies? Or well, the, if, if you want to, if you want, even now, if you want to build a GCC, if you don't have tech info, you will not get built manual pages and info pages. So it's even now it's optional dependency. So we will you'll still be able to build compiler. And about the, the dependency, if, if you if you don't have um, a package provided by your distribution, you can use uh, pip, which is a lightweight yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's a Python packaging system which you can get uh, the package just for you as a user. Not system wise, so it's. Yeah, for kernel folks, I mean, kernel developers are not pleased with new dependencies. And we were able to get past this. We added a little script that looks at your system and sees, you know, depending on your distribution, what packages you should install to actually run it. And you can certainly steal ours if you want to do that. But I would also say that relative to something like Tech Info, unless you're generating PDF, right, if you're just generating HTML, which most of our users are doing, um, the dependency chain is a whole lot simpler because you can drop the whole tech mess. Yeah, exactly. And that makes life so much yeah. nicer. So, so, yeah. So I guess an implied question there is, do we include some of these generated manuals in the release tables? Like I think we do with the info manuals generated by tech info at present. Can, can you actually generate info from... Yes, yes from that's, that, that's what we do for lab GCC JIT or for ADA manuals. But presumably there's no reason that you can't generate them and then include them in the tarball anyway. And I would note, if you're building a whole tool chain, you've probably got Python as a dependency anyway for GDB. Yeah. In, in the case of OpenSUSE, it's, it's a problem that we have yeah, so-called ring zero, which is a selection of packages where each depends on each other, basically. So you want to keep it as small as possible. 
because these, I don't know, for instance, GCC, GDB, Binu tails, there are very many transitive dependencies if you, there are very many cycles from dependency point of view. Okay, so, 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 so the question is still open. Uh, how should I get proper approval uh, from... Who makes the decision? Yeah, who's the decision maker? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do we, a straw, is it fair or okay to take a straw poll of the room and like see how people feel about conversion, uh, migrating to tech info, or is that do people feel uncomfortable being put on the spot? Like who who likes the idea of the migration? Because and who doesn't like the idea of the migration? Or maybe you don't want to be put on the spot. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it seems that I think we have, at least in this room, everyone wants to do this. Um, but maybe this is a self-selecting group because we are the people who came to the, this particular boff. Well, yeah, but, but decisions are always taken by people who care the most. The, the, the only thing, so I sort of think that there is very little opposition and that, uh, you know, we should probably raise this at the uh, session with everybody. We, 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 steering committee session uh, that basically everybody in the buff uh, was happy about it. They, I was just only a little bit worried about the documentation maintainers. I mean, they should really be on board. So I mean, if, 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 if it is like small things that can be changed afterwards, then I would say, let's, you know, do it gradually one after another. And if it, you know, the, mm -hmm. it is impossible to, to just do, to change everything at once. It's just, my only worry is that if it was actually the, the, the changes requested by Sandra, if they are like easy to do afterwards, yes. or is it something that really needs to be done now, otherwise something is lost? And no, it's, it, it can be done afterwards because, yeah, she, she has questions about or comments about selection of colors of individual, for instance, hyperlinks in PDF. She actually... Okay, so, so it's not really anything like no objections? It, it, no, was, no, no, it's... So, it's so, and so they, the maintainers are also basically okay with it. Yes, that. they are busy. Apparently, they don't they don't have much time for for documentation. Uh, but they are, yeah. I know about two of them: about uh, Gerald Pfeiffer and uh, Sandra Lusmore. So I, and and, and Joseph, you, you can you can express. As far as I'm concerned, once Sand was happy that it's ready to go, I'm happy that it's ready to go. I wonder how important Git blame is for documentation. How many times do people, how, how many times has anybody here used Git blame in, on the documentation? Yeah, you have a, an excuse. Yeah, but there are sometimes who like to see, yeah, a change in documentation. For the changes now or, or, or later incrementally, I think it's, it's important uh, how much changes it would be. It's fine to change a few lines here or, or there, but if we need to change basically every line in every file or, or even worse, rename most of the files, uh, then, then it could be a problem. Uh, I wanted just uh, to, to ask about the generated formats it can support, so, so it supports HT, normal HTML, PDF. Manual pages and info as well. Info, nice. Uh, in, so, so it doesn't support those huge single page HTMLs we had? Yeah, it, it can contain, it can support also this, this HTML if you want it, but okay. uh, we don't probably want it or... <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, is the idea to just convert the master branch or also the release branches? So um, I, I'm planning to changing it only for master branch. I, I was just thinking about the issue of uh, cherry picking or backporting changes from master branch to release branches, which will then need manual changes. Yeah, the, the, the question is how often do you do backport or documentation changes, which mainly come from newly added features, which you don't backport.
wondering if it will be just some conversion or it will be a bigger, I'm, ex I'm expecting it to be a bigger piece of work because as you go into the tech files, you'll for sure figure out, you'll for sure see stubs which you think are obsolete, like some statements. Most of the documentation seems good, but then what are your thoughts on that? Would, do you expect yourself to get into, because that exercise can then become bigger, right? If you, if you end up seeing some stubs in the tech files which are obsolete, and then how do we deal with that? Do we go to the maintainers to ask for their specific portions from the documentations to be converted, or? I, I just, I, I'm just trying to convert it one to one. And if you want to make changes to documentation, you can you can modify the, the current the current tech info version, and I will migrate it at, at one at one point. Similarly, as we move from SVN to, to, to Git, so we, so there will be some point where we will migrate all one to one. So if you want to make changes, do it now. So that that was one of the arguments that yeah we should improve the content of the documentation and i'm saying yeah you can do it even now it's uh, it, nothing is blocking improvements uh, yeah. and then so once this convert when this conversion is done do you think there is any need to sort of validate whether everything did get yeah I'm, 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 I'm actually migrating the documentation every i don't know two weeks mm -hmm. and i i send a patch to mailing list multiple times yeah. and the result is a publicly available uh, so so I guess yeah, this is this is documentation which is I don't know five five days old so uh, I'm yeah so so everybody who, who who was interested in the in the output quality could take a look because it, it's not the first time I'm uh, I made a migration So uh, with the mic, what we do about the target of the dev, which contains snippets of yeah, I, I I also migrated the content of the of the definitions, and I rewrote the the script which uh, emits the how we call it, it's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a file which we somehow include. Am I correct? So well, so it, it generates a new file and com you need to compare manually. Yes, so in case of Sphinx, you, you define so-called snippets and then you can, you can directly uh, include uh, these individual snip snippets of documentation and uh, it's, 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 it's working. The, the, the patch set I sent okay, uh, nice. includes these changes, which, which are fine. And we will, st we, and we will still have the, the, the need for copying uh, the, how is it called, tm. TXI, which you have to copy because of the licensing uh, issues. So it will remain that you will also copy this file, which is created automatically from a dev files. So, so in terms of what this would look like, in, oh, we're kind of out, running out of time. Uh, sorry, the, the, it would be like one enormous Git commit that basically deletes all of the .tech info files within GCC slash doc and replaces them with a bunch of .rst files. Yeah, the, the, the patch set contains, I don't know, five, six patches. So one is the removal, as you mentioned. The second is like copying the, the new content, which is automatically generated. Mm -hmm. There's some integration into the build system. And there are some, there are some uh, uh, yeah, small tweaks to, to, the, to the automatically converted stuff. Plus, the question is, for instance, uh, yeah, you, you would probably agree uh, migrating uh, because I have I have a shared config, config file, which I use for all the all the all the manuals. So I will migrate libgcc uh, JIT to using the, the shared configuration. And the question is for for Ada manuals if they if they are fine with uh, doing the same. So 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 so, so there's some shared configuration which which takes uh, version and. Uh, it's 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 doing a settings for the for the Sphinx, so an in, yeah, an individual configuration. Uh, I guess well we're running out of time. We, we, yeah, we are over, over time. I had a question for Jakob actually, if I may, which is with your release manager hat on, um, 
does this plan seem reasonable and when would we, if we were to do this, when mm -hmm. would be good? Good question. But that's putting you on the spot and I'm sorry. That's for Joseph or Richie as well. Uh, I think it can happen any time. Because, because we are not changing I think the people documentation. People aren't sitting on large documentation changes for, for features they are working. It's, it's much worse for, you know, for code actually. So, so when we switch the .c to .cc and, and stuff like that, uh, I think in, in this case it can be done now. Yeah, I, I don't have any. any yeah, I, I would actually like to have enough time to fix all the fallout, which is going to happen. So, so, so for me, earlier is 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 better. Okay. Okay. So that's that's all, and uh, yeah, we will ask at the uh, steering committee on Sunday. Thank you.